Hello everyone, this is Data from JGX and here we are with another Mac review, the Cataphract. The reason I chose to talk about this Mac is because it, I think it's unfairly forgotten by uh, a big part of the player base. Uh, I think it's a strong Mac and it should be used more. That's why today I'm going to describe how to equip it and how to use it. Uh, it got recently quirked. Uh, I was the author of the quirk draft for the Cataphracts. Um, the quirks got implemented like one month ago or maybe a couple of months ago. Uh, so we're going to discuss also these changes. I want to start from the Ilya Muramat because I think it's one of the most interesting ones. Uh, and then I'll go with the 3D 1X and then the other ones. First of all, the heat boxes. This is a cataphract. A uh, big city, small side torsos, most of them are right side mounted. So these mechs are good for a right side peak. You must use Excel, as a, basically on 95% of the inner sphere mechs, you must use Excel. Otherwise, you just don't have enough speed or firepower to compete. Eh, but my side torso blows up. It doesn't matter because you have a shitload of, of survival quirks. And staying alive for extra 30 seconds, it doesn't matter if, you're, if you have been running for five minutes with a crappy mech with a shitload out. So just bring Excel and maximize the performance of the mech. Yes, you'll blow up if you lose the Excel torso, but you have so much survival quirk on it that it doesn't matter. It, it kind of compensates. So as for the agility, uh, it's I think it's pretty much the same on all of them. The agility is in line with other heavies, like the Ebon Jaguar, the Black Knight. Uh, most 70, 75 tonners all have the, the same agility. Some have more. Uh, maybe the Brawling Orion has a bit more, maybe in terms of torso, turn rate 1 and 26, yeah, versus 99. Some heavies have more, like the smaller ones, for example, the Dragons, the Quick Draws have more, the Night Gear has less. Uh, but most of the heavies are around 30, 27, 25, so the agility is okay. Torso Twist torso turn, turn rate, it just allows the mech to side peak and tank pretty easily. As for the quirks, uh, pretty thick survival quirks across the board. Um, some of them, like the ones with mostly right side mounts, uh, have more quirks in the right torso, of course. Now, before they didn't. Uh, and uh, the ones that are meant to peak with the entire mech just have more on both torsos. And the turbo shit one has even more. Uh, starting with the Ilya, uh, as for the offensive quirks, we added energy range 5. The rest was already there. An amazing ballistic cooldown, ballistic range, ballistic velocity. Uh, so when you see energy cooldown but you don't see energy heat, means that you would do more by putting less energy weapons and exploiting the cooldown rather than putting more because you don't have the heat to use more energy weapons. The way I'd use this mech, like the Cataphract Ilya Muramat, is with two Yalaj and two Ghosts. The advantage of this is that it's a 70 tonner. This means that in a four-man pre-made you can run four of these identical. So you can take four of these with an AMS, sit on a mountain somewhere, and just try to play the game differently. Uh, the skill tree, generic, laser ghost one, you need velocity, you don't need all of the cooldown, you already have enough. Survival, because you have survival quirks, so you get the double buff, check the skill tree video if you are interested into looking more into this. Uh, operations, it's important. Zoom and double strike. You could remove some survival or, or half operations, 
for a cool shot. Uh, but I don't even think you need it. Um, as for the heat efficiency, more or less this is how it feels to pilot it on the battlefield. What you could do, yeah, is just that you stand on the mountain together with your teammates and uh, and try to build a firing line of four of these mechs with your pre-mate. The agility is pretty okay. It turns pretty quick. The cooldown is nice. And the heat is pretty nice too. So the range is amazing. The ghost velocity, you can feel it. The speed is bad, but not that bad. So for example, you could try to put four catafacts on that mountain there, or on the trash dump on the other side of the map, and try to dominate the battlefield with this kind of loadout. Find a side peak position, Another interesting one is the 3D. The 3D is more focused on uh, UAX and PPCs. It has UAX jam chance 30%, uh, PPC heat 5, and I think generic cooldown 5, maybe even generic heat 5, let's see. Yeah, generic heat, PPC heat. Ballistic cooled on 555 five, uh, and you act jam chance. So this is more for a quick play solo use because it's faster and more mid range. Uh, you could use this, it this way. It, it, this is faster, so it, it's more independent. The other one instead would need some teammates to, to collaborate with you. Take your mid range. With the agility, of course, it's the same. Target. Ammo explosion. Critical. It has a nice burst. And if you want to go for sustain, you just stop using your PPCs and you go just with the ultras. You have heat, you should also like the PCs. Critical. Critical. These ultras are generating a lot of DPS. You just reposition, you are fast, you take another corner, you peek, you hide, alpha everything, peek, you hide. I think it's a fairly strong mech for solo quick play. Uh, as for the other cataphracts, we try to give them some more. Some of them are decent, some of them are whatever. Uh, the One X, it's another nice one because it's fast as well. Same engine, XL300. Uh, it has some nice cooldown quirks, so you can side peek this way. Uh, similar usage to the Ilia, but this is faster. You could make it eventually even faster by removing the TC, removing the AMS and putting even faster engine. You could put, if you want a pure solo mech, NASCAR mech, you could go like this way, for example. And you now you're really, really fast. Maybe you can even go Light Pharaoh, remove this. 
TC1 because of the range on the lasers. Hit save. This is more of a NASCAR mech in line with quick play meta. Because honestly, once you, are play, you play alone, you get left alone in the back and you get just wiped by a horde of MGs and SPL OP bullshit. Nice range again. Nice cooldown. Not a problem. Another interesting one is the ECM one. Uh, the ECM one can load an AC10 and two heavy PPCs on one side. Good convergence. Because the problems with these projectile mechs is having them spread all across the mech. But if they come all from the same side, they have good geometry convergence. Um, yeah, ballistic range, ballistic velocity. Ballistic velocity is good here because the PPCs are faster. Than the AC tens, so with ballistic velocity they kind of match better. I think this is a good mech, like good, but not that good. It's just a fire and forget. Similar usage to the other one. Uh, this has a nice DPS, a very nice DPS. A lot of armor, like a lot of armor. This is. 100 ton, quirk to 100 toner level. It could be good in lower tiers, but due to the nature of how tier 1 plays, it is not going to be that great in tier 1. Uh, same with the 2x. This generates some good DPS, but it, it could be great in lower tiers due to the excessive amount of DPS that it generates and the thick armor but not that great in, uh, in top tiers. There is also a mask cataphract somewhere should be the 3L this just has more armor like a lot more armor than the other ones you could use it because of repositioning with the mask and try to copy some other builds from the other ones. But, but for me, the outstanding ones are the Ilya Muromet, the 3D, the 1X, it, to some degree the ECM one, and maybe the 2X in the lower tiers. The agility again is pretty much the same, it's just that the one with mask, of course, has more agility. I suggest you to try to bring cataphracts in uh, four man lenses. 70 for four, you can do it in a four man lens. So uh, that's it for today. We, we're done. And if you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time.